Hi, my name is Gina Kim and welcome to a mermaid watercolor and mixed media tutorial. I want to kindly thank Mary Beth Shaw and her wonderful Stencil Girl Products team for asking me to create this video using some of their exclusive stencils. So what I like to do is prepare a little bit. I use either acrylic based light modeling paste or watercolor ground. Either of those will work in this situation. Then I get about a 90 pound mixed media paper and I pre-stencil those. So, and then I let them dry and I, and I do several sheets identical so that I can cut certain elements, keep certain elements. And this way I have lots of choices in making my art journal page. So I'm using a hardbound watercolor journal, mixed media journal, and how this works is you're going to have to open it, open up your signature so that you create the first wave. Notice I have two self-healing mats behind um, each successive page, and I'm going to create about three wave lines across the horizon, if that makes sense, and then you just rip off the top. And then what I like to do is add a final horizon line so I can separate the sky from the water. Now what I like to do, and I'm going to rotate my journal vertically so that you can actually watch me uh, load my brush and see how I wet pre-wet the sky first. This way I avoid getting hard edges and I want the colors to blend into each other. But let me put some protective uh, sheet behind it. <laughs> so as I was saying, beautiful blends happen when you pre-wet the paper. So I just want to avoid or minimize streaks. And I'm just having fun. I'm using sort of like an ombre effect, purple, pinks, oranges, maybe even a kiss of yellow for the sky. And kind of let the painting paint itself and let that dry. So now it's the water's turn. And I'm going to, without pre wetting the paper this time, I'm just going to go at it. <laughs> I'm going to use different shades of blues blue, blue violets to royal blue, ultramarine, phthalo blue, even turquoise. I just want a myriad or prismatic coloration so that the eye just keeps going all around the composition. Be careful of that horizon line. This is why you want to make sure your sky is completely dry. And so two things you'll notice here. I am using, like I said, variety shades of blue, not just one blue. And the other thing you want to do, be mindful of is to keep some of the whiteness of the paper. Already it looks like um, an ocean because we're seeing sea foam and white crests and there's a lot of motion and movement already. I love this approach. We're just setting the stage up to use the stencils really, with minimal pencil drawings. And I'm just evaluating the color. Am I happy with the saturation level? I'm, again, being very careful not to overwork the water. Oh, and by the way, if you're on Instagram or Facebook, hashtag Art Lessons with Gina so that I can see how you interpret this lesson. Okay, time for things to dry. So when I look at some of the stencil images, I'm evaluating and selecting which mermaid or mermaids would work best for this page spread. So I love having choices this way. And because I already have several sheets of these pre-made, I can now begin to color. I'm going to make my mermaid a little brunette. 
and I use different shades of black, indigo, and burnt sienna, brown. One thing you want to be mindful of is that because pastes or grounds are, are very porous, they're going to accept pigments very quickly. In other words, you're probably going to have to put in maybe one or two or even three coats to a color that you're happy with. There's, so that's a little downside, but the good side to it is that you notice that with a paper towel, you can fix any mistakes pretty quickly. So here, like her skin, I notice that it's a little pale to me, and I want it to be more of a glowing tone. This is a sunset, after all. So I'm adding a second peachy color to her. And then I'm taking an India ink pen, Faber-Castell brush pen, and kind of defining her hair. See, and she got another, I think this is like the third or fourth coat of skin. I like it. So with her tail, her mermaid fish tail, I think I'm going to darken it a bit. I'm going to give her more of like a phthalo turquoise. Right. Like I said, I do love this approach. It gives me choices. I can select the mermaid so that I can collage this piece, this isolated piece. Really easy to fix. And I wish I'm going to speed up the cutting section here. I wish it was this fast in real life. So I, I love her. She's so whimsical looking. So in this stencil, there was some words, some nautical themed words on it. And so I'm pouncing it with the foam um, dauber. And it says wild salt, air, ocean, and dreams. And while we're at it, let's glue her down. I have to tell you, I don't like touching glue. It's one of my weird aspects. I just have to get a baby wipe and get it off me. Um, I just don't like glue or even gel medium. <laughs> Some people just wipe it on their pants. I just, I have to like stop everything and like wipe it. All right. So I'm going to use a smaller mermaid. So when I paint this girl, I'm just going to I know I'd be cutting her in half, so I'm not, I don't need to paint everything. And this time I'm using more of a green shade to turquoise. And while we're at it, I saw some cute whimsical starfishes and shells and even a seahorse. And I thought it would be really beautiful to add some metallic luminescent acrylic paint. The other thing I like about this method is that you don't have to be careful in painting your subjects. Um, notice how I overpaint that starfish and I overpainted the shell. I mean, you're going to cut away the outline anyway, so I like that. I like the non-fussy part of this uh, approach. Go ahead and glue all of your elements down. And why not add a third mermaid to our composition? I made her purple. And don't forget your star fish. No, that's a seahorse. You really need to know your sea life creatures. This origami paper caught my eye in the studio and I thought why not make it a rock jutting out 
of the waves and have her sitting on it. I think that adds a nice balance to this journal spread. I'm gluing her down. And we're finished. We have so much real estate to do additional journaling. And I love that there are layers upon layers and I feel like the ocean is just hugging you. For another fun option, you can add glitter, glitter glue, and some more iridescence, like metallic paint, to your mermaids. I had so much fun with this art lesson, and I hope you'll join me. Uh, my blog is at GinaLeeKim.com, and you can also find me on Instagram at GinaLeeKim. Thank you so much. I hope this inspired you today.